wherever or whenever. His big victories. You could bet it all on me. Anything that I do, I do it B I G. Shot callers, so they call on me. If my dogs don't eat, then they fall on me. It's the ice on the wrist for me. I'm living life like it's meant to be. Live every day, shit, everything big, big crib, big bands, nigga. It's a big victory. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. This is the Big Victory Podcast. Today, we're going to have a terrific show with some people I really enjoy and like. <laughs> As a Miami Dolphin fan. But we'll get over that. Today, I have Mr. Jamie. That's Jamie Dukes, your friend. Okay. See, it's bad when they forget your name. I didn't forget right. your you know, when they forget your name, you know, there's a problem there when they forget your name. We go way back, you know, we've been going back for... And Fred Dukes over here is a good friend of mine. But anyway, who else we got in the house? We have Mr. Rob No Sale. Say hello, Mr. Rob. Good afternoon, all. How you know it's afternoon everywhere? I don't you say good morning, too. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Okay, good, good, good. Then we have our co-host, Mr. Mav, the Renegade. What's going on? How's everybody doing? Now, I have the honor of presenting these two people, man. I'm very honored to have them on the show today, all joke aside. This young lady here is an inspiration for not just only, I think, black women, but women in general. Her story is very fascinating. Miss Takesha Clark, say hello to everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody's doing? Doing great. Hello. hello. How are you? I'm good. And then finally, we have the guy I dislike, but I like him. One of the best middle line, outside linebacker in the NFL. I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, he to does. be honest with you. He does. And I'm going to start this push for him, Mr. Mm-hmm. Daryl Talley of the Buffalo Bill. I can't stand him because he killed Marino so many times in the Dolphin, <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. Go ahead, Dale. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How is everyone doing? I hope you're having fun. Um, I have to needle this young man because he took some very serious whoopings from me. <laughs> I'm sorry. He, I'm sorry he's a Dolphins fan, but that all became because of a friend of mine, Dan. He and I have been fighting for a long time. Dan Marino. Oh, Danny boy. Miss <laughs> Clark has an amazing story. Yeah, we – listen, Miss Clark, when I actually – it was a god – Given gift when I found you. I'll be honest with you, I was just going through the hold internet. Hold up, play, hold up, play. Wait a minute. Hold your hand up, darling. Um, just hold your hands up there. Can you just pray yeah. to see? Um, you see the, the back of the one. You see that one? So so you just can't say you were a gift. She's There's a ring on there, so you have to be careful how you say Oh, it. no, I'm not married. Okay, okay, I'm okay. Single. Okay, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a ring. I, it's not a married ring. It's, 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 it's just a accessory. Yeah. You, you see all this stuff I go through in this show, Ms. Clark? You see what I go through from everybody? But uh, seriously, Ms., uh, finding her story, I find it very um, passionate. Rob, after you hear this young lady's story, you will be amazed, man. We're going to be doing some business with her, but I'll let her tell a story. And you guys, you know, saw me in when y'all get a chance to. Looking forward to it. So let's talk about the journey. Here you are, entrepreneur. And I guess it all starts before the entrepreneur because the journey is the journey. And so yeah. you grew up in Compton, I think you, you I, mentioned. And yes, so so kind of take us through the, the, the evolutionary arc, you know, that led us to, you know, a very successful business. And we can talk about that piece as well. But I guess where, wherever you want to start with your story, let's let's, let's hear from you. Well, my name is Takesha Clark, and I'm the CEO and founder of Capital Postal and Mailbox Service. I also have a franchise company called Capital Postal Franchising LLC. And so when I I had other businesses prior to having the postal store, so um, I was born and raised in Compton, California. Um, My grandmother raised me and my seven other siblings. So it was eight of us total. And so uh, we were all raised in Compton. And so when, by seeing her raise all of us, because my mom was on drugs. So she took care of all of us due to that. And by seeing her, you know, struggle and, and going through like financial problems, I just felt like I had to be one less problem for her. You know what I'm saying? To kind of help her as much as I could as I got older. So once I uh, I turned 18, I had started my I had started a daycare uh, when I was 20, 22. 
actually. And I started a daycare and um, I ended up doing that for like five to six years. And then from there, I ended up starting me a franchise, a Liberty Tax. I franchised with a Liberty Tax and started a Liberty Tax business. From there, I ended up branching off from Liberty Tax and started my own company called Good Faith Tax Services. And Good Faith Tax Services was also a tax company. But I had learned the game from franchising with Liberty Tax. And, and I took their model, of course, and made it my own and started my own tax company. Let me, let me interrupt been, you right there. So, mm-hmm. And this is really the kind of question for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody has that moment where you know you're different from everybody else in your family. Right. And so, so you know, uh, Mav, I'll start with you over there, and we can work it around. When did when did you, in your lives, Mav, and everybody else, when did you realize I'm different than my cousins, brothers, all the other people in my ecosystem who their eyes were set on something different? So, Mav, what? what? I would have to say it, it came right after I graduated high school and I, I got my first my first big song. And I was like, oh man, everything my mom told me not to do, I'm doing and I'm successful from it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is a whole new concept here. Tread lightly, my friend. <laughs> but no, that was definitely, that was the moment that I knew. I was like, okay, I'm different because I'm going against the grain and I'm showing and I'm proving that I can do it my way. Tally, you are, you know, been the Super Bowl so many times. Unfortunately, the one thing I always have to say is that I've seen pretty much most of your playoff games because as a Falcon, <laughs> I was at home watching you play. So our team, you know, we, you know, so I, I watched most of your playoff games, you know. Uh, I didn't want to say Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when did I notice I was different? Well, I wasn't much different from my sibling because me and my brother did a lot of things together and we did a lot of things alike. And we both we both made it to the league and we both played. Um, the difference was, I guess, I was that one that didn't care. I wanted to I wanted to play and I wanted to be good at it and play the game. And I wanted to have fun with my teammates. And I was a bit of a stickler for doing things the right way when you had to do it. Because that's the way my dad had raised us and that's the way we had been. Um, we both were very competitive. Um, I got, when I figured out I was different, if you can believe this, was after I got out of the NFL. Hmm. I didn't really think I was any different than anybody else. I thought I was the same as I everybody else. I could have told else. you that, bro. You was way <laughs> off. I could have told <laughs> you. Or, ahead, no, here, here, here's the true story. I, I honestly believe that. I believe that I could do what everybody else did, but I wasn't giving you the credit for it. And I thought that, you know what? I've got to work harder than everybody else. So guess what? I'm not going to let any time slip off the clock where I don't do my very best or try and play to the last seconds on the clock. Okay. I.e. leads me back to Buffalo and the game that everybody talks about, our Houston Oil comeback game. Well, I cussed everybody out in the locker room. But you always doing that. Don't I, no, 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 no. Usually I was pretty calm. I just yell at you on the field. I got you when you came off the field. I didn't want to wait to halftime to get you. I got you as soon as I seen you do something wrong. And I knew that that was going to cost me later in the game if you didn't do it right. So I had learned that. Get it while it's hot and on my mind and on the field. Yeah, I can do that. Off the field, I have to sit back and wait and learn, learn and study. So, yeah, I was impulsive on the field. If I seen you doing Something was going to hurt us. I called your attention to it, and I told you, we can't have that. Or if you got beat, okay, that's all right. We all get beat sometime, but you can't get beat no more. Ms. Clark. You got to win more than you lose. Miss Clark, this question was actually leading up towards, <laughs> so I can get an answer out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go around, Jamie go around the room since he has all the experience. You know what I mean? So I'd love to hear your answer. Then we'll continue with your story. Um, When I felt that I was different. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was a, when I was young, probably about 15, because I started, I started very young. It's, I had a baby when I was 15. So I became a mother at 15. So when I became a mother at 15, 
that kind of like really changed my perspective of life, you know, and it made me really, it even made me more, more so want to do more for not only for myself, but for my child, for my daughter at the time. So um, it really kind of like pushed me to really go forward, trying to be something or do something better for myself because, you know, I wanted to do better because I, you know, just seeing my mother go through her drug addiction and stuff like that was kind of hard for me right growing up as a child. So I just always said that I was going to do better when, you know, I become a mother. And that's kind of how I kind of felt like I was, you know, was going to be different. I didn't know I was different, but I felt like I was going to be different because I was going to do whatever I had to do to make, make, make it, make it right and be a good mother and raise my daughter differently. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, Rob, so what are you going to be trying to hide in the corner? Like this podcast. Listening and enjoying everybody. Um, (laughs) It's not what you're here for. (laughs) I guess when when I turned 25, when I moved down from New York to Florida and started getting involved in the securities business and all of a sudden the doors opened up financially and life changed. And uh, I never looked back after that. And then the biggest change was after my third child and that having three kids because everybody in my family always had How did you do that? And you got three of them out of that hole. Could you imagine? No, no. That's it's not easy. No, it was painful. No, I, I bet it was. Jesus Christ. Got to, man. Well, <laughs> he, he didn't have a kid. What's the thing? He says he has a kid. Men don't have babies. How did you know, he have a kid? That's what I'm saying. Kid, you know, so well, well, you know, I, listen, I delivered the third child. So oh, I, God. Here we go. Miss Clark, tell him. That we you, we weren't yeah. pregnant, you were pregnant, and you by I know, yourself. I did through, make a contribution. He, oh, you <laughs> did, and I'm sure you know what he You don't have the equipment. <laughs> Wrong but equipment. Did, did I had church. some equipment that worked. I went away. You're listening to the Big Victories Podcast. This podcast was recorded in Miami Podcast Studios. Call us now for booking 305-968-5366 for all of your video podcasting needs. 305-968-5366. The Big Victories Podcast, hosted by Big Vic, with co-host Mev the Renegade. Look, every morning that I wake up, say a prayer and thing to make up for the... Get back to Miss Clark, Miss Clark. What part of your story that that um I know you did the Liberty Tax and going mm-hmm. to, toward more the professional because I want to get to where the actual line of business of what we're talking about right now we're gonna get to. I'm not trying to rush into it, but I just find it very fascinating. Like you, huh? huh? Sound like you you know, we got a little more time on the show. Uh, you know? See, generally what happens, you know, uh-huh. you want to kind of lead up to it. We uh-huh. get that, you know, and we she was clo- we were close to a tier. I didn't and, want her to cry. I was like, no, but it was for me. And you then you, oh, my <laughs> God. You know what? So, so, so I didn't want her to cry. So I was about to say I saw you were getting passionate ahead, about your child. Yeah. But you know what I mean? I saved you because this guy wanted to see a tear so he can no, feel that moment with you. T- it was a t- Your tear. Like, no, let's get back to Miss Clark's tear. Like, his, his tear. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But uh, let's get back to your story. Like, you know what I mean? The floor's back yours again. Okay, so... uh. Where, where was I at? Liberty Tax. So I franchised the Liberty Tax, started my own tax business. Um, I stopped, I closed my tax business down um, when the COVID hit. Because, you know, at that point, I was like, oh my God, you know, that I was scared, <laughs> you know, and I didn't want to deal with people directly. So I ended up shutting my tax business down in 2019 or 2019, yeah. And um, I ended up, I, I had the Capital Postal and Mailbox Service, which I started that. I launched that in 2017 of May. So I decided to keep that because it's an essential business. So I was able to keep the doors open, but I closed them uh, three. I, oh, I kept the doors open three days a week. And, and then I closed them for the rest of the week. Because we were kind of like nervous about dealing with the public, you know, and catching the COVID. And my employees was really scared. So, 
it was kind of like I had to make a decision on how I'm going to continue to try to keep my doors open and, and still keep my business going. And what I did was I ended up doing some reconstruction on the business. I did some construction work and I had like uh, walls put up. So I had these walls put up with the with the glass, the um, bulletproof glass. And then I had the bulletproof um, glass box made so that the customers can put their boxes when they ship in that bo- in that glass box. It's like kind of like how the post office got it when they got the glass in there. So that's kind of how I I ended up doing my business and and it made us feel a little bit more comfortable to where we was able to, you know, feel comfortable with not coming in contact directly with the customers, but still being able to help them at the same time. So I did that for my store. And then we once I put that up, we opened the store uh, back up our normal business days and business hours. So, yeah, so, you know, and it's, and, you know, in my, in my store is doing great. We did actually, we did act absolutely amazing during the COVID. Um, the COVID was, uh, it was, it was a good, it was actually a good, good, good You can time. say it. A lot of people made a lot of money doing COVID. Yeah, we, we did. You know, we did really good during COVID and we was only open three days a week. Because we got a guy sitting next to me on the right that's going to make a lot of money. Who's it? You. We're talking about you. Ovi. Mr. Ovi. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. But um, you skip a part of your story. I'm going to get back. You <laughs> make bring you back to okay. it. Okay. How did you actually start at Capital? Okay. So, how I started Capital Postal is I wanted to, I used to want to work for the post office, but back when I was trying to get in the post office, it was really, really uh, hard. And um, plus I had like a, something on my background that would have kept me from, you know, at the time getting in in there. And so I decided to start my own, uh, my own company, my own postal store, which formed into Capital Postal Mailbox Service. But um You gotta say that with pride though. I don't like the way you just said that. You mm-hmm. you gotta say that with passion for me because you're the first. <laughs> you know what to me you're the first to do something? I am the first. So I am the okay, so I am the first black woman to franchise this type of industry. Yeah. I'm the first black woman to franchise this type of industry. Yes. Did you know that going in? Um did you have that plan or was it more about you were thinking more about, you know, this is something, as you said, because you said this is something that's an essential. So because it is an essential, I know I'm going to be good here. Or did you set out to say, I, you know, I'm intending to make history in whatever financial endeavor I'm in? Well, I always dream big, anything that I pretty much do. Big so. victories. <laughs> so I mean I always have a vision before <laughs> actually putting the you know putting the plan together. I didn't know that I was going to be making history at, in the beginning. I didn't know that cuz I didn't know until I had to actually do the research and all of that stuff, but um I didn't even know that I was going to franchise the the company, the brand you know, that was, I was just opening my stores or whatever, but, and then I thought about it, you know, I can franchise and help people become their own bosses and become entrepreneurs and things of that nature. And I'm trying to find, um, I'm trying to get in contact with one United So if he's looking or anybody know him, please hit him up. The owner of One United Black Owned Bank. Because I want to see if that he will fund some of the people. You're going to get them all. <laughs> if he, <laughs> if he will fund some of the some of the people that's interested in franchising mm-hmm. with Capital Postal and becoming, you know, a franchisee of Capital Postal, if he would, you know, be willing to help us with getting these people funded so they can purchase a franchise from Capital Postal Mailbox Service. Wow. Now I'm curious. Well, now I'm curious. What what is the procedure? What would it take for somebody who's interested in investing and wanted to franchise into capital? What, what what would the process for them look like? So the process will look like the franchise fee is thirty thousand dollars, and then the 
for the whole initial setup will be about 95,000. And that's for the, your location. And we help you, we guide you, and we help you with everything from start to finish. I even set up your, if you don't have a, your own LLC, I set all of that up for you. I do all of that to make sure that you are set up properly and that the business is the business and is separated from your personal assets. So I make sure that you're set up properly. And, we, and then I set up your store. I help you um, pick the location. Wow. I have you pick three locations and then we narrow it down to one location. I help you with going over the lease, making sure that you're not getting into a bad lease. Mm -hmm. So we help with all of that. Uh, um, of course, we train once you get your store, you get your setup, your store set up. We, we co I come out and actually train you. Me and um, my manager, we come out and we actually come in and train you hands on because I feel like hands on is is how you how you really get the experience than just teaching you something in a class. So we do hands-on training and we make sure that you're comfortable enough to be able to uh, be able to actually run the store without, you know, without us. Once, you know, we make sure that you're comfortable enough to be able to do that before, you know, we just throw you out there. Where is that store that's main, your main store located at again? We give out the address and your person, uh -huh. the information that you want to gather if anybody want to reach out to you. So my main store is located in Long Beach, California, and the address is 6187 Atlantic Avenue in Long Beach, California, and the zip is 90805. That's the main store. We also have another location that's located in Long Beach, Bixby Knowles, and that address is 3379 Long Beach Boulevard, Long Beach, California, 90807. That's great. Are you looking to expand outside of California? I am. So we have a so we have a Sacramento location that is a franchise location that's located in Sacramento, California. And that address is 4409 Elkhorn Boulevard in Sacramento, California. So I am looking to expand in all states. Okay. That is the goal. The goal is to franchise all over the world. That is my goal, and that's what I'm trying to do. Well, um, my I next location, I'm looking into going towards uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, you know that's market. that's big big business over there. Good so are you <laughs> well, we're, I'm working on that. So hopefully we'll be in there. So not hopefully we will be there. Yes. So well, you know I like to tie people together. There, I'm coming at you strong right now. <laughs> you know, you you know what I mean. Eventually, when you grow into that, some of these businesses need, you know, black strong man. Not because women doesn't do it for us ambassadors, who has been, who has been there, done that, and who actually has a voice and a face. Eventually, down the line, I would love to tie you in with Dale Tally as an ambassador for the Capital oh, Store and speak and Tally. We'll work out the deal. We we'll work out the deal, Tally, that it makes suited, and because that's the next step. That's when people don't believe we all can't do this by ourselves. Right. We all need to help here. That's the reason I got everybody yeah. in here together. Like these are all my friends, and they everybody has. I want to, if we could take two seconds, everybody tell her what you do for a living, so she understand. Oh, she okay. might yeah. be able to fill in her, the gaps she might be missing. Oh, sure. So let's. Well, right. We um um, I guess pretty much all of us are are partners involved in a, a company. In, in, uh, it's called Ovi. Right now, it stands for Operation World Vitalization Initiative. We are uh, in the. I'll say the green pharmaceutical healthcare space. So we have developed okay. green drugs. We have COVID drugs. We have okay. uh, what's called an emergency use authorization, which is what uh, Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer has. They just didn't get homie his money, which is that's kind of how some unfortunately things work. Uh, right. And and you understand opportunity there. Um, so you know the the things that we do is we look to work with everyone, for that matter. And, right. and and so some of the issues and things you're talking about, you know, there are people that we know, you know, amongst ourselves that, you know, uh, I think certainly um, will play a role. You know, one of the things that we do, we work with churches. And, and so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's a lot of low hanging fruit that could be in places where they already have memberships that, that we can kind of talk about, at, you know, at a, at a different time as well. Okay. But um one of the things that we're doing, um, 
uh, and I'll just say it this way. We, we think of it, and you understand this as an entrepreneur, two aspects of the business, and you, you have it clearly articulated. You have the B2C aspect of the business, which is general consumers coming in, flying, shipping, selling, getting your stuff in and out the room. And then right. their B2B operation is your okay. franchising. So, right. so in that same vein, you know, so in West Virginia, so we have our, our B2C operation is what we do with healthcare, working with churches and other groups and establishing facilities there. And then our B2B operation is manufacturing and we're going to control, you know, our own supply chain. We make the drugs, we own the drugs. So right. in, in West Virginia, um, Daryl, uh, he's a legend everywhere, but Daryl, tell us kind of what we're kind of looking to do in West Virginia. Boo, boo. But I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, basically what we're doing in West Virginia is that we found out that they have a high problem, probably they have a high, how do I want to say it, coding problem. They've, they've taken a lot of um, <laughs> opiates and stuff like that. There's a huge opiate problem there. Right. And we're trying to get in and educate some of the young folks there so that they're not doing it. Because what I found when I just being around it is that most of the people in West Virginia, a lot of the kids are kids raising kids. <coughs> they don't have any real adult supervision. So what I look at is, okay, the best way to solve the problem is let's educate the young folks. Let's teach them what they're doing wrong. And we've got to find some sort of way to cut that cord because when you have kids raising kids and not adults raising kids, right. you have a problem because right. they don't know what they're doing wrong and they don't know what they're doing right because no one's right. ever told. Them. Right, right. So with that being said, that part got hit home with me. The other part was we also have um, a pain drug that we're using that'll help a lot of the guys and people that have less like a lot of chronic pain. So right. that that I suffer with every day and I suffer badly with it. So. I'm all for that. I'm trying to get everybody else a little help so that they can feel a little bit better. Because if you feel better, you're more inclined to get up and go do something. Right. The problem with our population is our population sits on its butt. Right. And we need, our po we need our population up and on their feet and moving. Right. Because when you move, you're more energized. You, you know what you're doing. You have an idea of what you're doing. You're not just sitting and letting the world pass you by. Right. And that's what I think they have a lot of people in the state that are doing that. So I went to school there. I wanted to go back. I wanted to help them. Basically, what it is, I just got a, service, a heart of service. I want to help somebody else. That's right. So that's where I'm fitting into this. And I know a whole lot of folks in the state of West Virginia. <laughs> A whole well, lot that, of folks. That's amazing. <clears throat> I think what y'all doing is really amazing. Wait till you hear his that's part. That's the part you really need, the money part. <laughs> oh. Well, here's... here's that, that okay. Yeah, I always like talking. <laughs> this, is, this is the best part of the, the show today is that the weed man is a white guy. Yeah, the weed man is a white, <laughs> man is a white dude. <laughs> I mean, the weed man's a white dude. I'm just gonna tell me, well, maybe okay. it's not weed. Maybe it's not weed. Well, <laughs> don't take it back now. Don't take no, it back. No, no. It's just kind of how you want to. Uh, um, it's dope, man. Tell us about what you do. What of, you do? What you do? <laughs> just dope, man. Well, I don't know how you call it, but go ahead. Bro. I don't think we call it weed. But that's all right. What do you call it? It's called hemp oil. I grew up in the securities industry. Uh, EF Hutton, uh -huh. Kidder Peabody raised millions upon hundreds of millions of dollars for various entities, took companies public. And then about eight years ago, a friend of mine said, hey, I got something called CBD. And we said, ah, come on, if it doesn't get you high, nobody's going to buy it. Right. And five years ago, I had two golden doodles, two brothers, Elmo and Zoe. Elmo, a golden doodle, couldn't. I do have some the urban people in my show. What is an urban doodle? Because I don't know what A doodle? Have. It's a cross gold. between a poodle <laughs> okay, and a yeah, golden okay, yeah. retriever. Golden retriever, yes. Well, sorry, be precise, brother. It was a mutt. Okay, I got a question to you. Yeah, it's that. mutt. One of my problems is is that you like you walk in the neighborhood, uh, walk all the time. There seems like there's something wrong when a man walks a dog and the, and the man's feet are bigger than the dog. So don't you, you think there's that? something? Yeah, don't you think there's the something? Chihuahuas. Kind of, yeah, that yeah, just, just or Pomeranians. Yeah. So the doodles a little bigger. Doodles are eight yes. Pounds. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Okay, go so Our two dogs. brothers. Let's call it a mutt, man. Stop it's a be mutt. Fancy. Yeah, stop being fancy. So two yeah. brothers, fourteen years <laughs> I'll old. I'll say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, two brothers, 14 years old. Uh, Elmo was a crack addict, jumped all over the place. <laughs> Zoe couldn't get up off the floor. He had bad hips. And so this farm from Colorado gave me this tincture. And I gave it to Zoe. What's a tincture? A tincture is a... Hey, why don't we show this illustration? Right okay. There. 
Tincture is something uh, you put under your A tongue, dropper. A dropper full. Okay. Yes. You put it, so I gave it to the dog, and in a week I had a new dog. The dog was playing with his brother, and I said to my partner, what is this? And he said, it's called hemp oil extract. And so we started a company called Perfect Edge Botanicals, and we've never looked back. Uh, we've helped, on the pet side, dogs, cats, ferrets, iguanas, and parrots, and horses. On the human side, we have had people that are in their 90s down to the people that are two and a half years old with autism, mm. uh, psoriatic arthritis, gout. Uh, mm. pancreatic cancer it's just one of mm. those things it's it's based on your metabolism um, it's based on your genetics and it's based on mm -hmm. what's wrong with you but what it's trying to do is bring your body to homeostasis so that's what which means seen, which means it's trying to calm your body down from any kind of inflammation anxiety depression we've gotten people oh, off wow. the xanax off the percocets off the vicodins oh, wow. uh, just as good. an alternative and the farm is a usda certified organic uh it's kosher it's iso 9 1000 um certified wow. we don't only use any pesticides it's ladybugs and praying mantis and mm. we grow in colorado okay. we did 1500 acres last year and we're just enjoying to see people that's feel better good. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. But you know, it'd be great, sis, right there on the counter. <laughs> okay, can I ask? Can right I, there on the counter, boy. Let me ask that question because right I just told you. Can I ask the question? I kind of want to get in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody got, I'm you, in the wrong bed. No, no, somebody got to move it, though. No, but somebody got to move the product, right? Okay, well, right, right. Well, so, 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 Here I go. so, so, franchising, <laughs> organizing the growers, and see Victor. By the way, I don't know. You don't know much about Victor. So Victor oh, right. is <laughs> um, very. Uh, I don't want to use the word influence. Very well known. Um, works with a lot of farmers, agriculture, uh, okay. where they are moving product, all types of products. Some of it larger products, a lot of it smaller products. And so Victor is a is a person that is very well connected in in that that area as well on the ag side of things. But but mm -hmm. to your point, you know, like what I think about with um I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. So so the things that we and, and and it's on a website, I'll we'll send that to you. But the things that 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 one of the things that we're doing, part of the problem in our neighborhoods is that we have healthcare crisis. We have health care prices, right. we have food prices, and we have financial deserts. All right. three are plaguing minority communities all across the country, right. all across the country. So the strategy is that we want to address all three in one facility. You know, we have the health care piece. We got the doctors and all of those things. And, and then we have the science and the technology. You know, Rob mm. and his company, Perfect Edge, they own their own brand of products, just as, you know, and you're, you're, you're a franchisee, so you understand that part of the process. Right. So, so the key is, is just like we're doing here, is the synergies around the relationships. And right. so, so, you know, so we certainly can help because our whole goal is to help everybody, white, back, purple, or green. It doesn't matter, but right. help people right. who got a good idea. They have right. a, a great concept. And, right. and what we'll do with our relationships with the groups is we got the customer. You know, so right. now, as you talked about, you look for such and such bank, it, it's always been, and it's always been the issue for us, is capital. The right. access to capital. It's capital, you know? yeah. And so, and those are the barriers that are that are coming down for us uh, with some things that, you know, we had to go th around the world and back again, and this is two, three bottles of wine and a shot of something to kind of, you know. <laughs> you, but, but your yes. story is our story. Your struggles are every single one of our it's struggles. One of our struggles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just it's just different, but it's just, right because it's gonna always cost you something. Anything great is always gonna cost you. something. Yeah, Nothing. exactly. And you know what? Something and this guy shaking his head in the background. I'm about to come to him now because they have to do with you. I love to give away people's services for free, but <laughs> um, <laughs> Mav, Miss Clark, do you have a jingle yeah. for your business? A, th no. a theme song, everything. Let me give you the example. I don't. I have a song that actually passed beyond. I can never reach that level that my, my the music I have for my company actually. They hear the song, they look at me, they don't want to know it's me because they they hear the music. I find out our generation is based on music. It is jingle. <laughs> so it you is. happen to be every yeah. Go ahead. Every generation is based on music, man. I know that my mom, Dale, don't let me come through the, the 
that, but you'll break my neck. I'm too small. Like, hold me back. So he hold might not back. like what he gets yeah, when yeah, he comes to the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, don't, that, that was just kidding. That was just kidding, Bill. I'm just kidding. But on the seriousness, you have one of the biggest producers in the world, engineer, sitting right here on that. I would love for him to get with you and y'all create a jingle because your business is special. And there's a song, but there's a song behind it, man. I'm gonna give you the floor. Please do me this favor. Sure, that's too easy. That's listen. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. And, and he's also in California. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, we connect. For Definitely. sure. For sure. I would, I would love to contribute. It would be a blessing for me. Oh, thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Because so much. next time you come on here, I want to be able to introduce you with your jingle, with your music. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what leads you. Every great act has a song. Am I wrong? Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we are here. This is what we do. A business consultant. All joke aside, this is what I do. I do it for some of the bigger businesses. So I, why not do it for you as well? I'll give you the tool. When you hear Pepsi, you hear something. The NFL has something. Monday Night Football. Right. Rob has like, well, have something. You know what I mean? Daryl has something in his head, even though there's nothing up there besides killing people <laughs> on the football field. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wherever or whenever. It's Big Victory. This podcast was recorded in Miami Podcast Studios. Call us now for booking 305-968-5366 for all of your video podcasting needs. 305-968-5366. We're back with the Big Victories Podcast. Here's your host, Big Vic. For real, with co-host Mev the Renegade. I definitely want to get your thing. We're glad that you told your story today. Is there anything that you wanted to like to end it with, with um, besides saying information or anything you want to share with anybody else while you're on here? I just want to share this as well. I am partnered up with Pacific Gateway. And Pacific Gateway and also um, Los Angeles, the deep Department of Social Services. So basically, I partnered up with them and I give um, job training to the youth and ha- hands on. And they get paid also. Um, and I show them how to do it. I give them job training skills. So when they they get so many hours to come to my stores and they get trained by my managers. And once they leave, either they leave or I keep it. So depending on, you know, their work ethics and things like that, and if they're good, I will keep them and, and actually give them a job. And I have done several people like that. And so also with the game program, the game program is, I also have, um, participants that come through there and they come in and I give them job training as well. Now, when you say and game, are you saying like gamers, a game? No game. Program? It's called oh, game. game. Okay. Yeah. The game program. Okay. So G A I E. Okay. Know, okay. okay. Understood. Yeah. So I also give them job training and these are adults. So I have the youth program and then I have the adult program that I give job training to. And um, I've been doing that for about two years now. And then I also do uh, toy giveaways every, well, this is, I had two years. So this past uh, December, I did a toy giveaway. Um, And I give toys to the, you know, low income parents or the parents that really need, you know, assistance. When is this? When is this? Um, I usually do it in December. I did it December the 22nd, last December. Well, the and, Big Victory um, podcast will be donating something to you this year. We just got us off off the show. We'll get contact on today, and I'll send you something so you can... Okay. Just story. don't send her my package you sent me. I'm not that package. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you yeah, this. So, uh-huh. Let me ask you this. So, um, um, I'm, I, I'm a business. That's what I do. Um, okay. What I found interesting is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, in your business model, you can now add that layer if, if you, you've got proof of concept now with the training program. So what happens with the training, correct me if I'm wrong, state mm-hmm. subsidizes, state provides payments to your firm for that. To, 
Well, the state the state subsidized payments to the actual participant mm-hmm. to and come work for us, to you. come I get see. the job training for my farm. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. Because so, and um, yeah, and then if I decide after their hours run out to keep them, then I will put them then on my payroll. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then continue. You know, so I was in everybody interview with this one question because there's no self-promotion it's best promotion because I like to promote my thing. What is your big victory? What would you say was your big victory through all this? Um, My big victory through all this is really just inspiring people and just, you know, that's that's what I, I love. I love to give people hope and inspire and the toy giveaway is I love that. Every time I do that, that's just like, that makes me feel so good. And then the parents come up to me and say, you know, we didn't really have no, we wasn't going to have a Christmas. We're so happy that you did this. We appreciate you. And people coming up to me telling me things like that. That's what, that's what makes me feel good. And that's my victories. Just knowing that I'm helping somebody is my victory because it's not all about money when it comes to me. You know, I really want to help people. That's what I do. This is why I partnered up with these companies so that I can give back at the same time as, you know, making money or whatever. But my whole thing is just to inspire and give somebody else the hope that, you know. Amen. So, you know, Ms. Clark, I thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. We definitely bring you back after Mav get the song done for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I give everybody stuff with the devil. We'll talk about what you're gonna do for her. Rob, you too. So don't <laughs> shame you different. So we all we all gonna lend you a helping hand so you can lend somebody else I appreciate a helping that. hand. Because we all about Yeah, I'm looking through. for investors too. So anybody wanna invest? Yeah, I thought this guy, he got oh, all the I'm money. He got big <laughs> zeros. He got big zeros. Them two. That guy too. I'm willing to give up devil. shares and all of that for, you know, yeah, some yeah. investors to come in and, and help me really take, you know, expand it even more than what it is. Cause I did all of this by myself. Mm-hmm. So Let's you talk know, about it. So I don't really have Um, also said, send, get a package ready. Send a package to me, and um, I will send okay. it out to some investors that I know, and see if, okay. if we can actually um merge the gap, and see what okay. we can do. That's awesome. Okay. Fantastic. So I really appreciate Definitely. you. So to next I appreciate time, appreciate you Clark, guys. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank what you guys. Do. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for it. doing what you do. Nice yes. meeting everybody. Yes. yes. Nice meeting you as well. Don't hit that. Right. Go on and take care of the rest of that business you got over there now. <laughs> <laughs> Go on take care of that business, girl. Go on here. Go on. We'll holler at you later. <laughs> you, have, you guys have a blessed day. You Thank too. you very much. You too. Right. Right. Bye. Bye. Daryl, they get nice. to you. I had to get the woman out the room to talk to you because I don't know. <laughs> you know, you, you, you from Buffalo, so I don't know what come out of you. So we had that, you know what I mean? I, I hold it. First of all, I ain't from Buffalo. I'm I, from Cleveland. I can insult you. Know which is worse. <laughs> which is worse. Hey, somebody said something one time. One of the, the NBA, by the lake. NBA players said. That is me. He said, what's in Cleveland? I think with Jokey Noah, mm-hmm. when they were playing Cleveland with LeBron, he said, oh, yeah. what, who, 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 did you ever heard somebody say, I want to go to Cleveland for vacation? Besides yeah, Santa Claus. I, I spent a week one night there. You got lost? No. A me. week one yeah, night. I was about to say, wasn't my choice. So, Mav, you got to open up with this guy here. It was about your uh, Mav, who, what's your favorite NFL team? Jaguars. Come on now. That's where I'm from. Oh, my God. He don't come. So, that's my name. <laughs> I'm from Jacksonville. He's from Jacksonville. Sure. Jacksonville. Mav, pull up closer. Your mic is kind of low. Right? Home of Leroy Butler. Yeah, Leroy <laughs> Butler. Yeah. So, let's Man. get to you, Daryl. Because, you know, this is... Tell, I want to know okay. truly your story, Daryl. I know we joke a lot. You want to... You're a great guy, man. And just the time I have known you, I... A lot of people watching, and I hear nothing but good thing. What make Daryl Tally Daryl Tally? What's so what trig you? What what's in you, brother? What what's give you that passion that you carry around every day? Whiskey. <laughs> I <laughs> said whiskey. <laughs> no, no, wow. it ain't whiskey. No, it's oh. not, not, it used to be that was. Uh, uh, so I, talk I, to I, me. I get I get all my passion, I guess, from my parents and the way that I was <laughs> raised and the way that my dad. He showed me by doing it. My dad would help every kid that was playing football, or whatever. He even brought kids over. Hey, look, you, this is how you do this. He showed them how to dress for a football game. He just showed you a lot of compassion and a lot of energy. And he is not, he's one to put his money and his time 
into you. And what, and what you get out of it is something different. My dad's always said, it's better to build boys than to mend men. And I understand mm. what he means by that because there's so, many, uh, there's so many men in this world that have been broken down and broken and then trying to fix them and teach them how to be productive citizens and how to treat someone is very hard because they've had this stuff that's been ingrained in them for all their life. So they don't know how to change. And when they see that difference in change come, they're scared. And most guys won't tell you they're scared, but they're scared. And people ask me, well, Daryl, aren't you scared? What are you scared of? The only thing I'm scared of is that guy in the mirror. Because that guy in the mirror is looking back at me. So you're not scared of me? What he's going to do. No. Oh, damn. Not anything, <laughs> not anything that walks on two legs. Oh, okay. You walk on two legs, I don't fear you. Okay. I'm, I'm serious. Nah, that's um, dad. I, uh, I, I, I don't know. Dad, you might have, your dad ain't one to run up on. Uh, oh, no. He, le no let no, me no. tell you, I, I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I told the guys I wasn't going to tell them. Yeah, he said he has a story about your dad. That's yeah, why I, I, said, that's I, why I got that. rid of me Mr. Dad go, we, go, we go way back, you know, back to <clears throat> 30 so years. So, so, so 30, the, 35 it, years. 35, Jamie? something at least, yeah. So, so the tradition is depending on, you know, and this is the stuff that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> after the game, you know, like I said, we're all friends. We hang out in the summer. We, we might be here in Miami. We didn't spend a lot of time here in South Beach, so on, so on, so forth, you know, as friends in the off season, It's, it's not like the traditional rivals you see in other situations or whatever. So if they're coming to Atlanta, when they get on the plane, they're going to have ribs, chicken, food, liquor, the whole shebang. That's the care package that always goes with the guys. So him, Biscuit, Nate Odoms, Bruce, uh, you know. So so when we come to Buffalo, dad is going to always make sure his favorite little fat center yeah. was always going to have, He's you know, you know <laughs> he's going to make sure he had his nice little pack. So dad would always have a little bag for me special. Uh -huh. You know, Biscuit was going to do the, the brisket and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and tailgating, by the way, here in Miami. It's a different art. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> see, think about it's it. It's a different art. It's, it's only Indian. art. See, nobody considers tailgating an art unless it is an art. And that being in Buffalo, Buffalo different, it's, man. it's an it art. To be. You know, I mean, there's only one theater it's, and there's no it's, mall. It's, it's an art. You know, Baltimore, and there's certain places. It's just <laughs> it's, 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 it's a true art. Jacksonville, unfortunately, dog, it's not that. Nah. Y'all got to stop talking about Jacksonville it's, like it's, that, man. You know. <laughs> right, hey, man, you got to stand up for Jayville, bro. Anytime <laughs> the water is darker, anytime the water in the river is darker than the water in your darker toilet, the in the you got a problem. <laughs> Are you still talking about Jayville? Anytime oh, the God. water in Come the, on now, in you the gotta, river gotta, is darker than the hard. water in your toilet, we might have a problem. You better have say listen, something, brother. But, just but you know you that. Listen, you're from Jacksonville. You know that's that's a staple of Jacksonville, the St. John's River that runs through downtown. You know, do not even dip your toe in that water. <laughs> what you're gonna the hell? Yeah, Don't do it. <laughs> yes. Don't do it. <laughs> listen. See, hey, they pull the cars out of that river. They pull cars out of the river. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the That's cars are corroded. Yes. The stolen cars, people would dump, dump them in the river. Yep. Well, wasn't there the paper mills there also? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I must yeah. say, man, uh, damn, they ain't, I can't say nothing good about Jacksonville. Yes, you no, can. Don't, don't do that. Good you came out of Jacksonville. Sorry. Man, came that. out of Jacksonville. Yeah. Jacksonville's hey, a good time. There's oranges. Huh? There's oranges? There's oranges. Hey, man, come on, man. Hey, these guys are... Hey, yes, hey, don't let West no, Virginia get one up on you. He's from West Virginia, brother. Now he's from Cleveland. No, I'm from, not. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> Cleveland. Oh, my God. I'm in the mistake on... I mean, hey, look. I'm in the mistake on the lake. I'm the only place where when I was a kid in high school, the fish coming up out of Lake Erie would be frozen on the side of the, wall, on the, side of the fence, and mm. they'd still be moving, but they'd be translucent. <laughs> even the fish want to get out of Cleveland. Golly. <laughs> even the fish want to get out. Like, hey, <laughs> when... When when the when the winter gets here and just before the fall hits and the lake freezes, yeah, the water comes up out of the lake area up onto ninety. Wow! And it's hit. They even got a fence up there to keep the fish in the water and keep some of the water out of there. So, Dale, let's get back to your football career. Let's start. Let's go back to because I don't know if you told me some interesting story growing up about this curly head kid coming to school. What was it, junior high? Oh. You know he used no, to have hair, no, man. No. He used to have hair. 
Uh, curly hair, long curly <laughs> yeah. hair, and stuff like that. Tell us that story again. I want everybody to hear that. Um, Some of the things you were First of all, first of all, I grew up in a neighborhood that was probably when I first moved into it was uh, 80% white. And, but the school I went to was 98% black. So now here it is, I'm black and Indian mix. So I'm a little kid with my hair parted on the side. Jesus Christ. Cold <laughs> down. Yeah. yeah, it stayed in laid flat on my head. Yeah, Rob, I look, Rob, I look just like you. Just comb it over, yeah. keep walking, right? Well, imagine this. I'm in school, I'm there. The girls decide, hmm. Want to rub my hair, touch my hair, and pet me like a dog? I'm, like, no, I'm, not, I'm not your dog. But, no, but what did no. they say? He got that good hair. He yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah, he no, got that, that good let hair. Me, already know they let said me, it. Let me touch it. Can I touch it? Can I feel it? Got no. That good and hair. Now, mind you. Now, mind you. I'm six foot four now, but I was the smallest individual in the school in the classroom. Just about. Um, mm. The girls were bigger. The girls were bigger than me when I went to school. Um, I didn't grow until my junior year in college, high school. I got to high school. I, I wasn't any bigger than five foot five, five foot six. I grew in my, from my senior year, my junior year to my senior year. I grew from five, six to six, one. Wow. I had a broke ankle and I grew from six, one to six, four after I got out of high school. Jeez. But mind you, I'm the only person you probably know that has played less varsity football games than anybody else. But you played six seven games, my, seven games? I, I played seven games my junior year Wow! and three games my senior year. How did you end up getting a scholarship played, with Virginia then? Because of my senior year. I played. <laughs> oh, I, I was I'm hell when I was well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hell when I'm well. That's how that go. I'm hell when I'm well. <laughs> I'm, I'm hell when I'm well. <laughs> hey, that's, hey, listen. Oh, sit down and get it. loud. I want to hear that. I'm hell when I'm well. Yeah, man. I'm hell on two legs. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Here's well. the thing you got to understand. <laughs> I was, what? All my buddies were talking about what they were going to do that weekend. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll bet you I don't have to buy anything to drink this weekend. Y'all buy it all. <clears throat> and if I make the dream team, that's what they have here in Ohio. They have the dream team and the player of the week. So I said, okay, I'm going to make that. In two weeks in a row. And I did it, and my buddies wound up paying. But anyway, I, I'm the only person I know of that played three games in his senior year, seven his junior year, and got a full ride to school. Wow. I played against number three and four and six team in the state of Ohio and made a, in two of the games <laughs> I made every tackle on the field but maybe three. The other game I made 16. I well, watched go it. back that again. You made what? I made I made damn near every tackle on the field, except for maybe six. Jesus Christ! In two games, I used to watch him play. I was a little boy. He was great. When I was and the younger. other and, and the other one, I made eighteen in. Jeez. So the guy guys see me. I wasn't getting recruited by anybody. Scouts didn't even <laughs> came to our school until after I played this those three games. Then the scouts came and guys looked at me. See, Scott asked me, he said, son, what, where have you been all year? I looked at him. I told him, I said, I've been hurt. He said, you've been hurt? What was wrong with you? I told him I had a broke ankle. The guy shook his head, looked at me again. You had a broke ankle and you run like that now? I said, yeah. He says, how long have you been off the broke ankle? A week. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? You That's had a broke ankle? Exactly what I said. A week. I had a broke ankle. I broke my ankle going into my senior year. I cracked the inside bone on my leg and going into my senior year. So anyway, I had a broke ankle. He looked at me and shook his head and said, he runs like that. You got any more at your school like that? <laughs> yeah, <I got> you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, left, went, went on, went to West, went to, got recruited, got recruited by Iowa State, Syracuse, West Virginia. And I told Iowa and Iowa State, they were too far away. I went to visit Syracuse, almost went to Syracuse. Didn't go to Syracuse, went to West Virginia. Because the odds, when you're coming out of high school in Cleveland, you're trying to think, or East Cleveland, you're trying to figure out where it's going to be my best chance. Well, I looked at it. It was 6-1 to one in Syracuse. 
and it was eight to one at West what, Virginia. What, what best chance are you referring to? I don't think people understand what best. Then the women. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Why are you the speaking in tongue in here, man? You got to speak blunt, bluntly, brother. No, I, 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 this is point. No, blunt. Rob's doing all the blunt, blunt speaking over there. Oh, no, Rob, <laughs> Rob will be doing all the blunt <laughs> speaking. Go ahead, Joe. I'm like this. I'm like this. We had you had to figure out, you know, because you got to figure out what kind of girls going to be at the school. And I'm like, okay. I ain't worried about the education part. I'll get that because my mother will be on my butt. So I was trying to figure that part out and where I fit in best. Well, I went to West Virginia and Lord, did I not fit in at the beginning? I looked around. I was looking at everybody. I'm talking to them and I'm going, okay. I had a bunch of guys that were from the state of Ohio that went to school there. Um, my freshman year actually starting, we had 17 of the 22 starters were from Ohio. Oh. And of the 17, 14 of us were from around the Cleveland area. So I felt comfortable with the guys there. And one of my other friends ran track at Glenville, which was one of my rival schools. And that was the other thing that got me. We had a lot of guys that I crossed over and ran track against that were already going to school there. Glenville's a known so, school, too. I, I, even from down here, bro, I ran the track against them. They pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, me, they they had some they had some guys that could fly. So I did that. Got that's how I got to West Virginia. We'll be right back with the Big Victories Podcast. This podcast was recorded in Miami Podcast Studios. Call us now for booking 305-968-5366 for all of your video podcasting needs. 305-968-5366. Welcome back to the Big Victory Podcast for real. Let me give you a West Virginia story. So I, Tally and I, the first time we meet each other, actually we're playing against each other oh. in the Gator Bowl. <laughs> so <laughs> let them know what school you went Jeff to. Hostel, what school you went to? Florida State. Jeff Hostetler is the quarterback. Uh, they've got Brian Joswiak, who is the biggest human uh, uh, back then, I mean, he was—I mean, he was just like a Greek guy, like you know, in the movies, the older movies when they built the character Zeus. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Zeus was all chiseled up. Now mm -hmm. they make Zeus. He's 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 a, a Matt Damon size. Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause Matt Damon's a better actor, yeah, so yeah, we're gonna yeah. put <laughs> Zeus. So Zeus reminds me of Matt Damon. But anyway, because he's well, anyway. But we saw West Virginia, and so at Florida State, and I was a freshman. It was my freshman, my senior year. I mean, his freshman, his senior year. And uh, was, maybe, it was, was his, maybe it was his junior, but I mean, but I was a freshman. Maybe it was hostile this year. But 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 they had these blazers. They had these blue blazers, and you know we we come in and Florida State, our team come in dressed like this. Ah uh, yeah, this, these screens. No, this, like this, this, this is how this is how we came dressed, kind of uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. And these cats at the banquet had nice blazers on, clean like a whistle. It, yeah, and so. My uh, junior year, I organized uh, um, Nick's Toggery is a place in Tallahassee. Uh, and I've never told the story. Uh, Nick's Toggery is a place in Tallahassee. So we went and negotiated getting a jacket and we designed a blade. And I still have the jacket, but it was because of them. Does it yeah. fit you? Uh, I could get an arm in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can get my arm in. I can get my arm in the dang thing. I can't get my arm in the dang jacket. I'm not talking all the way on the shoulder. I'm gonna say, but I can stick my arm in the dang jacket. I sure can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I can't. I'm just saying, I can stick my arm in the jacket. The rest of but that's the not what he made for though. That's for your arm. For your arm. <clears throat> Just like he said, he can stick you don't you don't even stick your toe in that wall. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't do it. Hey man, why you still going at you, man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do but it. But yeah, but that's a that's a true story. No, so we um I uh but literally I got we organized everybody getting a job mm -hmm. because back then you couldn't work. And most of the guys, well, the parents might have had because I think the jacket was might have been eighty two bucks at the time. So that shows you how how long ago that was. But it was a yeah. custom jacket. Uh, from the finest haberdashery in Tallahassee. I heard about you in Tallahassee, though. Tagri. What'd you hear about me? You was the negotiator. Yeah, I was the... Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> he was the... Uh, I heard no. about you, so... No, okay. I, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, got, I, look, I looked out for the guys. I, was, I know you did. I heard I, about I, you. I, I was looking out for my people. Yeah, I As like you're you. supposed to. Mm -hmm. But, though, 
Let me tell you, I have a fun yes. story about you, about Buffalo. I'm going to let Rob get in because Rob over here, you know, he just want to be Mr. Drug Man. Don't say nothing else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, but, he's a smart guy. That's the thing is. you do. You shut up. Shut, sit there and shut up. Two ears, one mouth. You get to listen to everybody else's. Yeah. Huh? But listen, I hated you. <laughs> I just let's start it with that. Let me tell you why. I was like 16 years or 17 years old, right? And It's like your ninth year in the league. Yeah. Point. Yeah, I think it was your ninth year in the league. Yeah, I played the Miami Dolphins at home. <laughs> the first time I ever went to a Dolphin game, because the school took us to a Dolphin game. That right? was halfway through your career. Yeah. And Dolphin, I think, had a three or four point lead. I think it was close to four quarter. <laughs> and I saw this. I hated number. You made me hate number 56. I don't want to tell you that. I saw this guy came across. A, I think either you hit Sammy Smith, his fumbling ass. He fumbled the game away. We were leading. And all I'm sitting back and thinking, I hate 56. I never thought to this day I'm going to be sitting talking to you. I didn't <laughs> want to tell you to your face, I hated you. <laughs> but now, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, you brought back. You brought, I like listen, it, Sammy. Sammy was a. You know who my roommate was in college? Sammy Smith? Yeah. He's a. I don't use that word, but he broke a heart, man. You, you helped him. The reason is he ran so straight up and down. He was a he was a live target. <laughs> Man, we all thought the game was <laughs> running over. You you run anything up in the middle of the field or off an edge against me at Cornelius and we got a shot. So you're over. dealing with you know, no, night night. <laughs> Time to go to sleep. So what would you say is your memorable game? Just the NFL period. What the game you you can recall? Uh, game game I played, and it's actually funny. The only time I can ever remember, I I got hit one time. All right, here's one one play I like. Then somebody got you back. And, uh. Oh no, this is we're playing against the New England Patriots. We're in Buffalo. They throw an they throw a, an out route, and I'm looking at the out right going, I'm gonna pick this out route off. So the next time he comes up, throws the out route. I step in front of the out route, pick it off, catch it, running down the sideline, get to go back inside the numbers. Then I go back to go back outside the numbers where the guy that's throwing the ball, that he's throwing the ball to, Michael Timpson, Kirby Jackson was covering. Kirby Jackson was responsible for blocking Michael Timpson. Well, Kirby didn't say block his man. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, went, I ran in towards the middle of the field and back out towards the thing. The next thing I know, he ear holed. He ear holed, yeah. Crack back he, here. He hit me in the ear. He No, he came from the outside. Legal hit. Hit me square in the ear. I got hit. I got hit so hard that the light, the shades, went, the lights went out. Wow. But I can still talk and hear everybody. Right? <laughs> I'm, laying, I'm, laying, hey, I'm laying on the ground. Talkings. I'm laying on the ground. Talkings. I say... Biscuit, where you at? I can't see. I said, Biscuit, where you at? Get me to the sideline. He, tell, he said, okay. So I grabbed the back of his pants. And I got the ball, I got the ball in one hand and the back of Biscuit's pants. And we run to the sideline. By the time I had gotten tell to the Tell him who's Biscuit. Line, who's Biscuit? Cornelius Bennett. Okay. So and the reason me. why I call and the reason why I hollered for him was he had did something like that years prior, his first year in the league. He came in the game. We were playing his first game playing against the Cleveland Browns. A lot of people know this guy, a guy by the name of Kevin Mack. Yeah, Kevin sure. Mack, yeah. Running back. Kevin Mack was running this counter, and Cornelius hit him. Hit him. His eyelids flipped inside out, <laughs> and he was laying on the ground going, hey, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> oh, I look down the I looked down at the ground and I said, Biscuit, rub your eyelids. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, that's good. I can see now. That's that's what happened to him. So one time, I I get knocked, I get knocked stupid. I'm running to the sideline <laughs> with Cornelius. <laughs> that's the reason why I call for him. Because I know when I'm in trouble, I need I need help. And he was there. So and finish your score when you walk, you hold his pants, you got the ball. I'm holding his pants. I get to the sideline. I get over to the sideline. 
I couldn't see shit. I could see, then everything started to come back. And that was the hardest I'd ever been hit by, by anybody at any time. Anybody because not named, one, anybody not named Jack on the way to the Pro Bowl. Is that what you're trying who to say? Jack? Yeah. Who Jack? Yes. Who's Jack? Jack, 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 Jack on the Jack way to the pro on, on the way to the Pro Bowl. He had to go off. Yeah, just stop going on Zoom because Jack so, scared you. So there. this is this is my favorite Daryl Talley story. Jack is who? Who's Jack? Who's Jack? There's only wait, one wait, Jack. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to the sideline. He said, Michael "Wait." <laughs> Michael Temps has been the only person that's ever hit me, and not and I lost. I went black, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. All the other ones, you get to see all the stars and lights and all of that yeah, stuff. The stars you get to see all the yeah. fireworks. But, yeah, that was the only – that was the play that I remember Did you go back in the game after that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was no concussion <laughs> protocol or none of that shit, though. Yeah, there What's was. your mother's maiden name? <laughs> What's, your mother's name? <laughs> What's your father's maiden? What's your father's <laughs> – What's your father's <laughs> mother's – How many fingers are old? How many fingers are up? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> um, I'm mad. Yeah, they, <laughs> they used to be, they, they have a concussion protocols, but. Oh, yeah, my God. I went through it. I could answer all those questions. Can you memorize them? Knocked out. You memorized them. No, I, I was not knocked unconscious. I knew where I was at and what I was doing. But you just couldn't see. At that point. I couldn't see it when I first got done, <laughs> when he first hit me. I had one other person do that to me. His name Russ Francis. I went on an inside C stunt. Okay. Which is an inside move in front of a tight end. Patriots left the tight end. The, okay. Yeah. He hit he hit me in the ear hole, and I wound up looking up through my face mask <laughs> at Jeff Cross. Mm. Oh, the Jeff ear Cross, hole yeah. in my face mask. The center to play for the 49ers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Playing the 49ers in Buffalo. And that was my fresh my rookie year in Buffalo. That's what let me know I had to back up off the line on Mr. Russ Francis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next year I got a chance to play him. It was a completely different ball game. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> look, yeah. He, he, he was looking for him. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah. I was definitely it looked like your camera getting blacked out. What mm -hmm. shit? They got hit too? <laughs> no. No, he tried somebody trying to call me, but okay. that what was the other one. What was the Pro Bowl story? So that's uh, the one he <laughs> I went to uh, uh didn't play in any. First alternate, five of them, four of them, or something like that. So I went to one with Dion. So at the time, uh, you know, Dion, you know, he's telling me his story, and he said, "Man, them Bills, man, they're crazy." He said, <laughs> yeah. "He said them dudes are crazy." So at the Pro Bowl, you get on a Pro Bowl, you meet somewhere. Where'd you guys meet at? In some city? Where'd you guys meet and then fly over to Hawaii? No, no, no. We flew from the Super Bowl there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We we lost. We had lost. We had just lost to um, the Giants in the Super Bowl. Which you should have won that game. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that was the one we lost. Yeah. Wide right. So that gives you yeah. the more context. So, mm -hmm. so they get off the plane. Mm -hmm. Bruce Smith got the wheelchair. <laughs> one of the players. No. Who That's Cornelius. 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 Okay. Cornelius has got the wheel again, who ride or die. Yeah. They wheeling somebody off the plane who's drunk. <laughs> 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 so I didn't find out who it was. And I don't know how many years it took me to find out who it was, but there it is right there. But these guys, man, <sighs> man, we played hard. We partied hard. We go uh to Magic City and set it out. And he told me about a, a, a club. He had to be in a hood to know that club in Atlanta oh. because that was my hood club. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, Solid Gold solid Atlanta. Go, now, you had, gold, you had to be somebody with heart to go to Solid Gold back then. Over here off of uh, Yeah, it was just like... Metropolitan way, that's what You don't called. get up and say, let's go to the gentleman club with, and just walk in there. You know? But see, but the thing was, but see, you go to places like that because it's all script. You didn't want to go to the gold it's, club. Yeah, you yeah. didn't want to go exactly. to the other clubs, which we we would do that too. But when you went to Solid Gold, that means you know you was you found you a little something that's off the radar. Yeah, <laughs> off, off the, the radar. And that's, and that's the whole key is is finding you something that's off the radar. So what made you get into football? Me? I I started out playing football because I challenged my dad. My dad said you want to play football? I looked at him and went, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I said, if you play, I'll play. He said, okay. 
So my old dad, my dad was a tremendous athlete himself. I didn't find out what kind of an athlete he was until after I got out of college and any of that, because my dad's not one to show or hold on to his records and everything and things that he accomplished and stuff like that. He didn't care anything about it. He just did it because he could do it. Well, come to find out, yeah, this man could play football, could run track, tear a cover off a of baseball, Damn. Um, ice skate. He could do just about anything that he he wanted oh, to do. Oh, ice skate? That's awesome. Yeah, that was, that was cool as hell, though. That, that specialty my, my was dad, being cool. <laughs> my dad, my dad, in my opinion, might be the best athlete I've ever laid eyes on because yeah. – we had, we had guys in my high school run 9 skip 9-6, went 9-7, and 9-8, I ran. So my dad came home from work, and for 40 yards on a Sanders track, after ro- working 12-hour shifts, he came up to a track practice and outran everybody. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. In tennis shoes. <laughs> outran them. That's what so I'm doing, my yeah. dad... Yeah, my definitely. dad went to school with guys like Harrison Dillard, Sam Tidmore, which were big, huge track guys, Olympians, mm. um, that he, he ran against and was on the track team with him. Come to find out, my dad was actually pretty damn fast himself. He was, all, he was part of the state track team that won a, national, that won a state championship. They, won a, they didn't win a football championship, but he also played with Bob Brown. Bob Brown was one of the guys that he sent off the field that my dad was like, I ain't going back. He said, that guy right there, he ain't coming out here no more. My dad decided he was going to hit Bob Brown upside the head and they went to war. And they said they'd never seen anything like that. So that let me know then when I look at where my dad, my dad wouldn't, would not allow anybody to interview him because He's black and Indian. He was afraid that when they interviewed him, this is how crazy it was back then. When they interviewed him, it would capture his spirit and wouldn't let it out. So he didn't want anybody talking to him. He didn't, he ran from publicity. My old man is the only person that can do tremendous things and run from the publicity that comes from it. Yeah, people these days run to it, man. That's special. Yeah. But so I, I had something I wanted. That's why I get it too. from. Playing for the Buffalo Bill, we all joking around, remember my Miami Dolphin fan and all that. There was a level of respect I had for you guys, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To actually, the achievement, if it was the today with the internet and all these social media platforms, some of you, half of y'all be in jail, but we ain't worried about that. <laughs> well, or or three-year careers yeah, three instead of 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, this is yeah, a six-year yeah. career but, just because uh, you know. Yeah, but but as far as pure football, a football team, I have never seen somebody done what y'all guys did four years in a row. How did that? What was that feeling like, man? Actually, it was five in a row or six in a row. Six. Five years in a row. Correct. Five years in a row. Championship. We're games. in. Yeah, championship game. Yeah. Five, five AFC straight championship games, wow. and to do that, it took a lot of fortitude. It took a lot of moxie, and it mm. took a lot of togetherness. And we did it with a core group, but we had French pieces that came and went, but everybody still fit into, as Jamie likes to put it, our ecosystem because we were, we were accepting of all. No one was turned away unless you were a complete a-hole. If you were a complete a-hole, we couldn't figure you out, straighten you out. Then guess what? You just had to go to the next team or somewhere else because we actually ran a couple guys out. <laughs> ran a couple guys off of the squad because I did not like the way that they were treating other people because of their ethnic background or whatever. I just didn't go for it and I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I said, that's a bunch of bull- BS and no, we don't have that here. Then let's go back we to what you talk about ethnic. How was it feel to play a game in Buffalo? Same Buff- way it feels to play a game in Cleveland. <laughs> oh God! I keep bringing Cleveland up. You make like Cleveland is, is, is a safe favorite. No, he's, no, he's right because well, it's the same. I'm thing. on the same dirty lake. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two and a half, Not dirty. Two and a half, three cold. Hours. It cold ain't lake. dirty then. It's cold then. It, at that point, I was in it, Green Bay. We, 
I was in Green Bay, uh-huh. and, and same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Reggie White told me before I, I was um, before the year before I went up there. Reggie said, "Yeah, it was it was seventy nine below Duke." <laughs> I said, "Look here, bro, bro, bro. It can't get seventy nine below, below in the planet. Okay, come on, <laughs> stop it, stop it. It was fifty nine below hey, when I left. That's, wow, that's fifty nine. You got you got wow. to remember the wind chill. That's that's the whole thing. You're not that's, taking into consideration. True." The windshield and, and Buffalo is unique because we're on a lake. Mind you how the stadium's built. Mm-hmm. The stadium's below built below Ooh. the ground the grade. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now you got all the wind whipping across the lake. Now imagine when you have the wind whipping around inside Rich Stadium, how that's going to be. Oh my God. It was and, it was unbelievable. And the way it was in Cleveland. It used to be a football field and baseball diamond. Half of the third base side would be frozen, solid. Wow. So you'd have to play on the dirt. There was no putting grass on it because yeah. it wouldn't stick. Baseball. Yes. So, yeah. Trust me, I played, I played in a lot of places where it's been really cold. But no place has been as cold as it was for us to play the Raiders that one day. Hmm. So, they didn't have like you it. ever played against this guy, Jamie? Yeah, we played. Tell me yes. a story about a Jamie. You have to have you ever like? Did you ear hole nah. or something? <laughs> no. Damn. Why not? I was. I was, Why? Because he wasn't carrying the ball. Oh. Okay, and at okay. the time, at the time, I was trying to avoid people like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> except, for when, except for when. When it came time for the counter, yeah. Now, when it came time for the counter, somebody got to get now somebody got to get ill, yeah. yeah. Somebody, some, no, somebody gonna get hit in the face. Yeah. I'm hitting the face mm-hmm. with it because anytime you bring a, a 300 pound lineman down a line at me, and you think I'm not did, gonna knock him, yeah. In the but next he week, didn't turn. But he didn't turn. He couldn't turn on you. So you had to hit him in the ear hole because yeah, he's trying. They gonna get down the line, huh? No, because you're pulling. The yeah. Counter, you're pulling yeah. down the line, and so They're then when pulling. you try to turn up into the hole, you might have hit him in the face because he turned his head there. But they, you catch that lineman right in his ear hole. Mike Singletary was the best. Yeah, crazy you, Mike. That center, no, no, no. if that center dropped back, blocked back. Oh my God, whoever it was was getting yeah. destroyed. It. Oh yeah. Well, the, the problem is when you're in the middle, it's just a straight down block, and you're going straight ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, the the guards actually turned, and he's running at me. And I get it running. He's running to me, and I'm running at him because now the tight end's going down the tackle and the guard. The only person coming is that far offside guard. And if I hit him on the low shoulder, I could bounce the play, which is what we're supposed to do. But Cornelius and I came up with a different way to play it, and that's hit the guard in the mouth. <laughs> if you hit the guard in the mouth, you got a chance to beat the guard over the top and make the play. But if you go underneath, they just wall you around, the guard tackle Seriously. keeps coming. Mm-hmm. And he just keep coming. He got a big ass tackle in front of him. Now the inside linebacker's got a problem because Shane's got to deal with them, or mm-hmm. either Ray's got to deal with it. So if I hit the guard, I can take out the guard and the tackle and make the play. I got a three for <laughs> guys. Three listen, for one. When we come into the toward the end of the show, I like you know everybody. If I have anything, I would ask Daryl or Daryl for anything special. I really appreciate you coming on today, Daryl. Um, He's no so, problem, man. But I definitely will get you back on because this <laughs> there's more story to be told. I, I have a story to, I found to. out while we on the show. But I actually next time we bring you back on. You know what I mean? So don't Sounds like don't, a winner. Don't feel too safe though, because I still don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <but laughs> I don't feel safe. Yeah, yeah, Trust yeah. Trust me. So Rob, what do you have to say to the great Daryl Talley? Hey, it's a pleasure to listen to your stories. I want to hear the hardest time that Jamie got hit, but um, Yeah, he didn't say that. <laughs> you know they they buddies, so he didn't say it. I got ear hole. Well it was not I hit uh Reggie White. That's that's my I think one of my few concussions was few. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I have many. You know, I mean, this we called it dinged. Uh, 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 you just got you know, yeah. or bell rung. Yeah, bell rung. Bell rung. You know, Dorsey Levins did yeah, a great bell rung. special on and then, bell rung. Yeah, and then you just see little stars. Right, just a little bit. You see little stars. We didn't know what that meant. <laughs> so yours was Reggie White. No, yeah, I hit. I just I was jumping on a pile, kind of, sort of, and and hit him. I had my head down. Oh, okay. And I and hit, hit him. The top of your head. Uh huh. And and the funny thing is, the problem was. I think we lost the game. So I came out of the game. The center who came in behind me 
I think it was Mike Rooster. I think they fumbled the snap. Uh, one of those. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and I, and I think it was one of them deals. I think that we we lost the game. Now, Talent, I will tell you this. So, me and Chris Hinton, so Chris Hinton's on the team at the time. Oh. And so, we're playing against Reggie. And, you know, and this is when Reggie's in Philly. Yeah, yeah. oh, God. Not that he was, now Green Bay was nice too, but yeah, in Reggie Philly was a, was, in, uh, was a grown. He was just nasty. Yeah. Now, so, so now me and Chris, nasty. we lose the game. And after the game, you know, we're all walking towards, the, you know, back in the stadium. And, and Hinton and I, we look at each other and we hug each other. <laughs> yeah, made it through, huh? Well, we didn't give up a sack. Oh, okay. So, so you know, it was one of the things where you can't really overtly c- celebrate because you lost the game. You lost the game, but <laughs> you but, sack. but Reggie White won't have me on Sports Center. Yeah, yeah <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jack you know, Hammer. Yeah. That, you know, so there are little victories inside yeah. losses sometimes that you got to be grateful for, and thankful for. So anyway, mm-hmm. what you say, man? Now, listen. Just listen to the experiences and the stories. It's just like you know, you get such a deep look. You know, especially coming from the man himself. So I just appreciate you for blessing us with the, with the stories. That is legendary to me. You know what I mean? He is a legend, and we're gonna get his buddy. And, and we, we got to get you in the hall of fame. He'll get in there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they, yeah. He you know just went I mean? in. He went into the Ring of Honor. For those who don't know, congratulations! Congratulations, man! Congratulations. Ring of Honor, West Virginia. That's a Congra- big I saw honor. that. I actually seen that. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, and, uh, man! So I got one thing to say about that one. Here's the thing. I really, it really hadn't hit me until after I got done, but I'm only the fourth person in that school's history to go up there. And they had such high criteria that you had to obtain. We, I mean, a lot of the guys obtained, there's only one other guy that obtained it. And that was, um, when it's two. Haas is in there? No, Haas, Haas is not, not in there. there. Joe's nope. reaction not in there. Johnny Major, no. uh, uh, Major no. Everett, Major it, Harris. It, it, Major Harris is the only. Major yeah, Harris is Major, the only yeah, Major one. was good. Major was the only other person that cleared the criteria, and one running back. Uh, I now that's this is where my mind leaves me. Running back from West Virginia, and I know who it is, and it was during our era, and I can't. I can't. Think- yeah, I it's, can't think of his name. I can't think of his name. I know I, um, it's going to hit. Tony Slayton. Tony yeah, I wasn't who I was going to draw on. So it's Tony Slayton made it also? No, you, Tony Slayton, was, this is for college. Mm-hmm. All the things that you had to do in college. Tony Slayton was the only other person that could do that. Mm-hmm. That was it. So none you know, of the other person. running backs, none of the other running backs, quarterbacks, linemen, receivers, anybody had passed the criteria in which we had to go through to get there. Well, congratulations, so, brother. Yep. And that, when I really thought about that, I said, you know what? That's, that's huge. That's, I mean, because guys can't, guys can't get that done for them everywhere. What's the criteria? Uh, you had to be a first team, all American. You had to be a first team consensus, all American. Okay. Um, you had to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. You had to, since I'm in College Football, uh, there were like four or five other things that you had to do. Damn, what and everybody with Jesus? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you had, you had to be first team on them. You couldn't be second team or third team. You had to be first team on them. Wow. Well, Daryl, man, really, really appreciate it, man. And, um, Honor. Um, Tell people how they can actually follow you on social media and if any great thing you're doing and um, anything. Well, on social media, I'm listed on Twitter, Daryl Daryl 56 Tally, and D56V on what's the other Instagram. You sure that's what I'm it, having a hard you time. sure that's what it is? Because I'm still I waiting so. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put you out there. I sent it to you. Uh, okay, I sent it that was not yesterday. correct. That was not correct, by the way. It's because he don't use social media. Okay, kind of okay. Show. Well, we need to get him on there, and that's one of the things the criteria these sports writers and these people who voted that actually sort of don't forget about you, Daryl. A lot of them, that you, right. you, you know what I mean. I, I understand. And that's where a lot of ambassador ambassador deals happen because people just you know you you have a following. You did it in the field. Now it's something to do yep. off the field. Will do. 
you know, we're going to do it, so you're going to have to figure out the password, <laughs> brother. That's why. Right. That's why. Done. Yeah, you gave me miserable for the, all my damn life. Got to get you back when I can. <laughs> damn Buffalo Bill. Why, why you want to beat me up, man? Nah, I love you, I'm man. Only I want to beat up people. Look, I love, I'm, trying, I'm trying to pay the bills. You're doing a good job of it. That's all man. I'm trying to do. Appreciate I'm it, man. We bills. sunning out Daryl. Anybody got anything to say, Daryl? Because We're I'm about to hang up on him. Out. We're out, right. Mav. Awesome. Good seeing you again, man. Likewise, man. likewise, likewise. You guys Take have a good one. Good seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> we out. Star, big body, Bimmer. Y'all them love me one finna me like then a big bulldog. Four four, air tigger. In the boy, this will get them egg top. Lift up in the push star. Big body, Bimmer. Y'all them love me one finna me like then a big bulldog. Four four, air tigger. In the boy, this will get them egg top. Lift up in the.